Welcome to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we are going to talk about various binary codes. This part of this lecture was taken from chapter 1 of Kohavi's book. So, we are familiar with the binary codes where we uh, have seen in previous classes that uh, the binary codes are useful in doing arithmetic operations and literally all digital computers uh, are use binary codes. But when uh, it comes uh, between the interaction between the computer and the human, sometime uh, interacting from the human side to the computer using binary mode is bit uh, problematic. So, in the early years when uh, this uh, the computer systems were evolving, various different other code was developed and those code have various interesting properties that is useful for certain applications. Okay. So, in this, in this class, so I am going to talk about those codes and their certain properties and most likely also how they are useful in practice. So, the primary concern is that when we human think about is uh, the code in terms of the decimal numbers right, 0 to 9 and computer understand in binary mode. So, this 0 to 9 can be coded in binary mode the way we have done where uh, uh, we have used uh, uh, 4 bits right? because there are 0 to 9 there are 10 bits so 10 digits to re represent 10 digit you need at least 4 bits right. So, now uh, when you have this you basically have 0 0 0 0 which is 1 then 0 0 0 1 which is sorry 0 0 1 is 0 this is 1 1 0 and so on this is 2 this is 3 then 1 0 0 is 4, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0, 1, right. This is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8 and this is 9, right. This is the binary and this is the decimal value, right. So, what we understood here is that whenever you have 10 digits to represent uh, in a 10 decimal digits to represent in binary we need 4 bits and in 4 bits there are 2 to the power 4 means 16 possible values is can be constructed right, but we need only 10 of them. So, you can choose in many ways this 10 out of 16 which is basically 16 C 10 right. So, there are many way you can just select 10 uh, such uh, values out of the 16 possible values and I can just map them into that 0 to 9. It is natural that in binary you do this way, but there may be other way also you can do it. And this various binary codes utilize this flexibility. Okay. So, if we just think about this uh, bits, it is basically say uh, this is x, x1, x2, x3 and x4, right? these are the bits. So, there are 4 bits and when you add weight to this bits, say suppose I assign x1 is w1 x2 is w2, x3 uh, w3 and x4 is w4. So, I can assign weight corresponding to these bits and then my number n will be nothing but uh, w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w4 x4 right. So, based on the value of 1 0, so if uh, say this bit is 0, uh, I will not take this weight, right. So, for example, if it is 1 0 0 and 1, it is basically w 1 plus w 4, whatever the weights. In binary, these weights are basically 2 to the 1, 2, 4, 8, right, which is basically 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power 3. So, if I have a number which is 1 0 0 1, so, that means my x 1 is 1. So, it is effectively w 1 plus w 4 which is 8 plus 1 which is 9 number represent uh, 9 in the decimal right. This is how in the binary, but I can assign different weights right. So, this is not necessary that I have to uh, assign the weight 1 2 4 8. I can assign different other weights and if I assign different other uh, other different weights, I will get different code. Right. So, that time 1 0 0 1 may be something else. Right. So, for example, suppose if you have taken the weight say 2 4 2 1 and then if you write 1 0 0 1, 
then the value will be 2 plus 1 uh, is 3 right. So, then 1 0 0 will represent 3 in that particular code right if I my weights are 1 4 2 1 right. So, various such weighted code was developed where we consider different weights. So, these weights have been considered in uh, with specific significance with that that we will discuss. So, based on this uh, weights I can classify some set of codes as weighted code ok. We will talk about uh, three such code one is BCD binary coded decimal which is nothing but the binary the binary numbers I code the decimal number in binary. So, this is binary coded decimal is BCD and there are two more other uh, weighted code I will discuss in uh, in today's class uh, which is self complementing code that I will discuss. There is another set of coding where I do not uh, going to assign any weights. I will have this 4 digit 4 bits binary, but uh, there is no weight associated with this ok, but they have some other property ok. So, those class of uh, code is called non weighted code and I am going to particularly uh, talk about 3 uh, non weighted code today XS3 code, 1 cyclic code and 1 is gray code. So, that is something we are going to talk about. So, let us move on to our discussion on weighted code. So, as I mentioned this is what uh, my summary of first page uh, discussion that we have 10 decimal numbers we need 4 binary bits to represent them. So, there are some redundancies there. So, there are going to be many possible codes right and in weighted code we will assign a weight to the each digit and I calculate the number by multiplying the weights in the bits right and this each of the code uh, whatever I got binary digits is called code word right. So, this is called code word corresponding to the decimal number. So, three weighted code we will discuss today's class the first one is the BCD ok where weights this is BCD binary coded decimal uh, which is uh, the normal binary number that we are familiar with where the weights are 1 2 4 8 of the digit x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 right. So, this is x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3 and x 4 and the weights are w 1, w 2, w 3 and w 4 right. So, here I just uh, take the binary representation of them and there the weights are 1, 2, 4, 8 and uh, corresponding numbers are the binary numbers that I have written in the first slide as well right. This is exactly the binary numbers. So, here this 0 0 0 means 0, 0 0 0 1 means 1 and so on. So, this is we are familiar with ok. So, this is also can be used in the uh, in representing the decimal digits. There is two more weights uh, which we will talk about one is one, uh, 2 4 2 1 and 6 4 2 3 ok. So, one thing we have to understand this weights should be within 9 because if the weights become 10, 12 then if you just take this value this value will not come in inside the decimal digit. So, the weights should be between up to 9 basically rather uh, less than 9 ok. And second thing is that the value can be negative as well as we have seen here ok. So, in 2 4 2 1 the representation is like this. So, if you take say one of the numbers say this. So, here if I try to uh, calculate the value this is 1 into 2 plus 1 into 4 plus 1 into 2 plus 0 into 1 right. So, that means this is 8 right. So, this represent the number 8 right. So, this way you can just take any other one. So, let us may take this one which is 0 into 2 plus 0 into 4 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 into 1 which is 3. So, this is the number 3 it represent right. So, this way uh, this uh, I assign the values ok the 1 0 values. So, that uh, I just take a weighted sum of this bit with the weights this will represent the corresponding decimal digit ok. So, this way this uh, can be explained similarly here uh, the weights are 6 4 2 minus 3 ok. So, if you take say this one and it is 0 into 6 plus 1 into 4 plus 0 into 2 plus 0 into minus 3 which is basically 4. So, this is representing the number 4 right. So, if I take this one it is 1 into 6 plus 0 into 4 
plus 1 into 2 plus 0 into minus 3 which is 8 right. So, this is representing 8. Let me take one, one of them which is have 1 here. So, let me take this one. So, here if I take this one it is 0 into 6 plus 4 into 1 plus 0 into 2 plus minus 3 into 1. So, this is 4 minus 3 1. So, this is representing the number 1 right. So, this way uh, I can define the code word. So, whenever I know the weights I can just uh, uh, assign the value of 1 0 such that uh, the corresponding digit can be realized with this uh, weights ok. So, this is something uh, understood, but if you notice a little bit uh, carefully about this weights you can see here that this uh, representation is not unique ok. So, for example, here in 1 2 4 8 uh, the representation is basically unique right because you, if you want to represent 1 you have to use 0 0 0 1 there is no other way you can represent 1 here, ok. Whereas, uh, in this uh, say the code word this if you want to represent say 2 you can use 1 0 0 0 this is also 2 or you can use 0 0 1 0 this is also 2 right. So, both are possible but I am using for 2 0 0 1 0 this one right not the other one this I am not using. Similarly, there are many other uh, uh, possibilities of a 3 also right you can use 1 0 0 1 or I can use 0 0 1 1 right and I am using the 0 0 1 1 this one not this one right. So, there are non unique right the representation of the digits in this weights are not unique similarly here as well. Say for example, if you want to do this 6 you can do 1 0 0 0 this is also 6 or 0 1 1 0 this is also 6 right, but I am using uh, for 6 0 1 1 0 this one not this one right. So, what we understood here that in this particular code the representation is not unique and I have chosen carefully chosen only one of them. So, what is the reason of choosing this one not the other one? is to make this coding self complementing ok, self complementing. So, what does this mean by self complementing code? The self complementing code says that if you take this any code word from here and if you just swap the value from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 or flip the value from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 then I will get the another number from this code itself and the value will be also 9 minus n ok. So, if the n is the value if I flip the values then whatever the value I will get that is the code word corresponding to the value of 9 minus n. So, let us look into this say for example, if I take this the 2 4 2 1 1 and say I take this value say ok. So, this is 0 0 1 0 this value is 2 right. So, if I uh, complement the value 1 1 0 1. So, this should be 7 right. So, I can see here that 1 1 0 1 is 7. So, this is self complement and this is true for any of the value ok. So, let me take one more example here. So, suppose I am taking the, this one ok. So, this is 1 1 1 0 which is 8 and if I do this 0 0 0 1 which should be 1 and this is 1 right. So, this is self complementing ok. So, this is this the property uh, this particular code word holds. So, the way I am going to assign this uh, code word when there is multiple choice such that they maintain the self complementing option ok. So, the, the other one also self complementing right. So, if I take this one say I take uh, this value which is uh, 1 0 1 0 which is 8 and if I flip it 0 1 0 1 should be 1 and 0 1 0 1 is 1 ok. I can take uh, one more example say let us me take this one 1 0 1 1 which is 1 0 1 1 is 5 and if I complement it 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 is 2 right. So, if I take 0 0 1 1 this is 5 this is 5 and if I take 1 0 0 that should be 4 right. So, this is 4, this is 4 
right. So, this is basically 4. So, this way uh, these codes are both of these uh, codes are self complementing ok. So, this you remember here this property uh, this BCD does not hold. So, BCD is not self complementing ok, this is not self complementing. So, let us see that if I take say some weight some of them say let us may take this one this one. So, 0 1 1 1 which is 7 and 1 0 0 is basically 4. So, this is not 2 right for 2 self complementing it will be 9 minus 7 should be 2, but this is 4. So, this is not self complementing right. So, although this BCD is uh, convenient, but then it does not have this property of self complementing ok. So, why this particular uh, code is NP complementing? The rules that satisfy this weights is basically the sum of these weights should be 9 ok. So, if the sum of these weights are 9, then this code will be self complementing right. So, 6 plus 4 plus 2 minus 3 is 9, 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. If I do 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, it is 13. So, this is not self complementing, this is self complementing ok. So, as long as sum of the weights are 9, uh, this code will be self complementing and that is why these two particular weights are important. It is not that I have we have chosen this arbitrary. So, these codes the weights are chosen such a way that this code uh, satisfy, satisfy the self complementing properties. So, if we take uh, how many such possibilities are there? So, if I take the positive weights, there are only 4 possibilities of weighted codes on which the code will be self complementing because this is the only 4 possibilities of addition, uh, the sum will be 9. So, here if you add it will be 9, if you add here it will be 9, if you add here it will be 9, if you add here it will be 9. So, these 4 weights combinations are self complementing. So, there are only 4 such possibilities, ok whenever you are taking negative weights as well. So, there will be 13 such possibilities ok. So, one of them is discussed in this class there may be some 12 others which you can find it out and see who, what are those 12s which are also uh, having this property that summation of the weights is 9 ok. So, let us move on we will now discuss this non weighted codes. In the non weighted codes uh, as I mentioned there is no weight associated with this. So, you have this uh, value x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4, but it is not that if you multiply this particular uh, digit with the weights you will end up getting the decimal number. So, there is no weight here ok, but this particular codes are evolved with a specific properties ok. So, let us see what are these uh, properties this non weighted code that we were talking here uh, satisfy ok. The first one is x s 3 as the name suggests it is excess of 3 from the binary. Okay. So, whatever the corresponding binary number if you add 3 then it will become excess 3 code ok. So, if you just say if I take 0 so 0 0 0 0 which is 0 decimal. So, the if I add 3 it will be become 0 0 1 1 right this is 3. So, this is my uh, 0 representation in excess 3 right. So, this is my 0 representation in excess 3. So, whatever your binary representation, so let us say take 5. So, this is 0, 1, 0, 1. If you add 3, it will become uh, 8, right. So, that means 1, 0, 0, 0. So, which is basically the corresponding 5 in excess 3, right. See that 5, it is this. If you take say 8, 8 is uh, in binary uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. If you add 3, that means 0, 0, 1, 1. If you add, it will become 1, 0, 1, 1. So, 1 0 1 1 is uh, corresponding to 8 in excess 3 ok. So, this is that means although there is no weight here, but this code is obtained just uh, by a specific way right. So, you just take the corresponding binary number you add 3 with it whatever the code is here is basically excess 3 code, but this particular excess 3 code has uh, that self complementing property true ok, which was not there in uh, the binary code. So, you remember that this BCD code that I talked about is not self complementing right. So, but whereas when you add this 3, this excess 3 become self complementing right. So, let us see whether they are self complementing or not with few examples from this table. So, you see here let us take this 1011 right 1011 this is 8 in excess 3. 
So, if I do a complement, so 0, 1, 0, 0, it should be 1, right? So, 0, 1, 0, 0 is 1 because 9 minus 8 is 1, right? Let us take say 3, right? So, 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 3. If you do a self complement, 1, 0, 0, 1, which should be 6, right? And you see here, 6 is 1, 0, 0, 1. So, this will hold for all possible combinations. So, the a beauty of this XS3 code is that there is no weight, it is obtained from BCD code, but BCD is not self complementing, but this is self complementing. Okay. Now, I will move on to the next one is cyclic code. In the cyclic code, what is happening? It is obtained such a way that two consecutive code were differ by a single digit. Okay. So, if you see here in this particular cyclic code, you see this if you just take any two combination, right? So, if you take these two, it is only differ by only one bit. If you take these two combination, they are differ by only one bit, right? If you take these two combination, they are just differ by one bit. If you take these two combination, they are only differ by one bit, right? If you take these two, they are differ by only this bit, right? And so on, right? If you take these two one, they are differ by only this bit. If, if this two, this is differ by only this two. If you take this two one, they are differ only here, right? And if you take the last two combination, they are differ by this. And if you take this and the last one, they are also differ by this and this bit. Okay. So this is why this is cyclic code, right? So where you have only one bit difference between these two code. Okay. So the advantage of this kind of code is that when you basically do a some switching activity, the number of bit flip will be minimum, right? When you just say counting something or in an electrical system where you are basically uh, managing things, certain things between 0 to 9, the number of bit flip will be minimum. And if you uh, aware of little bit of power consumption of a circuit, the dynamic power consumption is sometime uh, is basically proportion to the number of bit flips. So, if the number of bit flips is minimal, the number of power consumption will be also minimal. So, in such scenarios, the cyclic code is very useful. Okay. So, as I say mentioned here, this uh, cyclic code, the successive digital number differ by just one digit. Okay. And uh, if you see here, usually this the numbers are uh, assigned such a way that uh, you just do not do this, right? That it is basically in binary it is 0, 0, 1, 0. But we just make such a way that from this I just make it 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So I am assigning 3 kind of in binary in 2 here. And then I assign 0, 0, 1, 0, okay? So which is kind of 2 in binary or BCD, right? But just to make sure that this switching happening minimally, okay? So the most important cyclic code is gray code. Okay, the gray code is something very useful. It has many other properties so that this code is very useful in practice. Okay. So, let us uh, see the gray code. So, gray code is also cyclic code. right? So, in gray code, we can just consider things about 9, but we consider uh, the things till 16 uh, because uh, this has some significance. Okay. So, here also if you just look into the numbers, if you take any two consecutive pair, let us say here, they are differed by single bit. You take some arbitrary this one they are differ by one bit. Okay? You take some arbitrary here, they are differ by only one bit. So, you can just cross check any two successive uh, numbers, they just differ by a single bit. Okay? So, that property actually holds here. Okay? So, the advantage of this uh, gray code is sometime that if you try to convert this number into binary, it is very easy to convert from gray code to binary and binary to get code. So, this is something uh, one of the uh, primary advantage that this code is uh, have minimum bit flipping among, among the consecutive numbers and it is always easy to convert them from binary. So, let us see how uh, this conversion is easy, right? how we can do that. So, if we know the binary number, say your binary number is B0, B1, B2, B3, four, B, uh, so you can just think about 4 bit uh, at this moment, but if even if the number is bigger, it does not matter. So, in gray code, it is not only 16, this gray code can be extended to any number of bits okay? uh, and this property still uh, will hold. I will show uh, how we can construct a very large gray bit easily. Okay? So, uh, the example that I have taken it has 6 bits, 
but the example in the previous table I have only shown uh, the 16 of them otherwise it take lot of space ok. So, how will obtain uh, if I do a XOR operation right XOR means what uh, in the XOR what do you do usually I have already talked about that if you have A B if it is 0 0 your XOR will be A XOR B it will be 0 0 1 and 1 0 it will be 1 1. So, whenever is one of them is 1 is XOR right, but if both of them is 1 it is also 0 right. So, what I can do I can just take uh, this the first uh, LSB 2 bits and if I do XOR and then that will give you the first gray code bit ok. Similarly, B 1 and B 2 if I do XOR I will get the second G 1 of the gray code right. So, it is basically uh, if your uh, corresponding bits are G 0, G 1, G 2, G 3, G 4 and G 5 right and so on. So, for G 2 I will do B 2 and B 3 ok. For G 3 I will do B 4 and B 3 and then for G 4 I will do B 4 and B 5 and the final bit is exactly as B 5 ok. So, this way I can easily uh, convert a binary code into a gray code ok. So, let us try to explain this with this. So, suppose your binary code let me take this one ok. So, 1 0 1 0. So, if I do a XOR of this it will be 1. If I do a XOR of this 2 it will be 1. If I do a XOR of this 2 it will be 1 and this will be 1 right. So, this was 10 in binary and corresponding gray is 1 1 1 1 right. This is how I will obtain. This is my binary and this is gray. Let me show one more example. Let us say probably I will take this one 0 1 0 0. So, if I do a combination combine this two, so this is my binary one. If I combine this two, it will be 0. If I combine this two, it will be 1. If I combine this two, it will be if I combine this two, it will be 1 and then it will come 0 right. So, this is my gray. So, 0 1 0 0 is 4 in binary and corresponding gray is 0 1 1 0 right. So, if I know the binary I can just doing this XOR operation of the bits I can construct the gray code easily ok and you can try for any others this will hold for all possible values ok. What about converting a gray into binary it is also pretty simple it go, goes by this logic that you start from the leftmost digit right. So, suppose you have a gray code 0 1 let me take 0 1 1 0 ok. 0 1 1 0. So, I am taken 6 basically right let me, I have taken 6. So, this is my gray what it says you start from the leftmost digit and you check how many ones are there previously the preceding part. If the preceding part has even number of 1 then you keep the bit as it is ok and if the previous part has odd number of 1 then you flip it. Okay. So, then you make G dash okay. otherwise you keep it G, G 0. So, let me explain here when you are in this bit there is nothing here right. So, there is 0 number of 1. So, that means which is even right. So, then I will keep this bit as it is in binary. Then if you are in this bit right. So, now you are here. So, you will see how many uh, ones are there here. So, the number of 1 is basically even because it is 0 right. So, then what I will do I will just keep the bit as it is. Now, whenever I will take this one, so when I will going to take uh, the third bit, what will happen? I have to check how many ones are there here and the number of one is 1 which is odd. So, then I will flip this bit ok. Now, whenever I am going to take the this bit, I will check how many ones are here, the number of 1 is 2, 1 plus 1, 2. So, then you will keep this bit as it is ok. So, this was gray 6 and this is let me just cross check. So, in gray this is 4, this is 4 0 1 1 0. So, this was so this was 4 in gray and you know this is 4 in binary right. So, this way I can do any of this conversion ok. So, uh, we can just check one more one here. So, let me take uh, one more gray. So, let me take say this one ok. So, let me take this one 1 1 1 1 which is gray and this is 10 ok. So, the process is that when I will start here the number of 1 is always 
even right. So, this will be always flip this one. For the second one, uh, the number of 1 is 1 which is odd. So, this will also flip ok. Sorry, this the first bit uh, let me just start with again. So, whenever I am going to take the first bit, the number of 1 before this is 0 which is even. So, this bit will be as it is. Whenever I am going to take the second one, the number of 1 here is 1 which is odd. So, this will flip. When I am going to take the third one, so number of 1 is here is 2 which is even. So, I will keep it is as it is. When I am going to take this one, number of 1 preceding to this 3 which is odd. So, I will flip this one right. So, this is binary 10 right which we know. So, for 1 1 the binary is 1 0 1 0 ok. So, this way the conversion is quite simple ok. I hope you understand this. So, this is one of the uh, advantage of this gray code right. So, this is uh, first of all this is cyclic they just differ by a single bit and conversion is also very simple. Uh, the final one is this uh, is called reflected code and gray code is reflected code and, and this is a very useful property that once you try to construct a uh, n plus 1 bit uh, code from n bit code you just have to reflect it ok. So, let me explain what. So, suppose you know that there is a 1 bit gray code is 0 1 ok. So, now I want to create a 2 bit gray code right. So, that means for 4 numbers. So, what I will do? I will just reflect this. So, if I just put a mirror here then 1 will come here 0 will come here right. So, now I will put 0 here 1 here. So, this is my 2 bit gray code ok. You see this is my 2 bit gray code right. So, this is corresponding to 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 right. So, now I have 2 bit gray code. I want to create 3 bit gray code. So, what I will do? I will put a mirror here and I will try to reflect. So, then this will come here because nearest one will show here, then this will come here, this will come here and this will show here right. And then I will add 0 for the first half, I will add 1 in the second half and this is my the gray code from 0 to 7 right. Now, once I uh, try to use a 4 bit gray code, what I will do? I will put again a mirror here and I will just do allow to reflect. So, this will come here, this will come here and so on and this will come at the end and I will add 0 here and 1 here. So, this is my GC uh, gray code for 4 bit. To create a 5 bit, again I have to put a mirror here and I will reflect this and then I will put uh, 0 uh, for the first half, 1 for the second half. So, this way uh, this code uh, can be constructed for any arbitrary width ok. So, what we understood that gray code is a cyclic code, this is a deflected code and also conversion is easy and we will see when we basically uh, do this logic optimizations in combinational circuit, we will actually use a concept called Carnot map ok. And in the Carnot map effectively this gray code logic works that so that this uh, you have two consecutive uh, min term they are actually differ by a single bit ok and we are going to use that particular property to minimize a boolean circuit. So, that will be covered in upcoming classes ok. So, with this I conclude today's class thank you. Mm -hmm.